Full disclosure, this subject has a lot to it, and in order to take the time to do it justice, this video is likely to get a bit long. So if you're the type of person who doesn't care about the backstory, you only want the nitty gritty, the Coles notes, that I'd encourage you to use the chapters feature that you see across the bottom of this video, slide across and click onto the chapter that says applying this tip. In our recent video about follow through 20s, I referred to visualization as being a little bit esoteric or spiritual. And there were some comments, rightly so, that I shouldn't have called that esoteric or spiritual because there's actually scientific evidence to support the effectiveness of visualization. The truth is, I couldn't agree more. When you think about it, there are three key areas for success in the great game of Crokinole. And in this video, we are going to briefly cover the three of those and then we're going to dive even deeper on the third one. The truth is the third key to success is one that I've alluded to, I've kind of tiptoed around, but today we are going to dive into the deep end of that and talk about how you can use it to take your game to the next level. I guarantee if you apply this tip to your approach to the great game of Crokinole, you will see it improve. And I can also guarantee you that this is a tip that you can take and transfer into other areas of your life that you would like to see improvement in. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Crokinole Boards. If once you've heard this tip, you think to yourself, yeah, whatever, I've been applying this my whole life, then I encourage you to go ahead and comment, how do you apply this tip and what kind of results have you seen? But if you're someone that this is new for, or you're hearing it in a different way, I would love to see a comment about how you're going to start applying this to Crokinole and beyond. And if you're sitting there thinking, yeah, Jeremy fell off the deep end, <laughs> you can go ahead and comment that too. Now the three keys to Crokinole success, I would call these areas or categories, and there's no question they overlap each other. But the three areas are, number one, let's call this physicality. And this is to do with the physical skill. That's all about, you've seen our videos on like how to flick your disc. So the physical part of this game is when you are learning what flicking style works right for you and learning to be consistent with your weight and your angles to be able to get the results that you're looking for with the flicks that you make. Now, what happens when two players play at a very similar, they have a very similar level of skill in this area? One of them is going to come out on top and it's probably because one of them is better in this second area, the second key to success. And that is the area that we call strategy. So let's say that you have the physical skill that you are able to angle in, make a shot and angle your button into the middle. That falls into the physicality category. But the strategy comes in is when you know when you should and when you shouldn't use that physical skill that you have. You know when to play offense, when to play defense. You have the physical skill that you are able to knock your opponent's button off, but when you have the strategy, when you have that key dialed in, you know whether you should knock your opponent's button all the way off or maybe do something counterintuitive and leave it on. That is the category of strategy. Now, digging into this third one, the real meat and potatoes of this particular video tip. The third one, now let's say you've got two players and they have a very similar level of skill in category one, the physicality. They also have a very similar level of skill in the second category, which is strategy. My question is, which one of those two players is going to win that head-to-head -head match? Maybe when you hear that question, you think that what's gonna make the difference between who wins and who loses strictly comes down to luck. Now that, in my opinion, is a four-letter word and it it will be the subject of a completely different video. What it comes down to, in my opinion, the difference between uh, two players that have a similar skill level, a similar understanding of strong strategy, it comes down to our third key, which is their mentality. How mentally, emotionally strong are they? How able are they to handle the mental aspects of this game? And that is what this tip is all about. We're going to dig into one thing that you can do that will absolutely improve your the third and what I feel is probably the most important category of these three keys. Digging into the mentality aspect of this game, like I said, this is something I feel like we've alluded to and we've tiptoed around and it actually comes back to why in my follow through video I referred to it as esoteric or spiritual and the truth is I was kind of hiding behind the fact that this is something that I've I've studied and enjoyed and loved for like I say more than half of my life I have been studying this stuff and it is so impactful and so powerful but I wasn't being completely upfront so one of my goals 
goals and intentions in 2022 is to be more real, more raw, more vulnerable. So therefore, we're going to dig into some of these tips. Some people are going to resonate with this and really sink their teeth into it. And other people have already clicked off because they don't believe in the real power of that six inches between your ears. With that massive preamble out of the way, it is time for us to dig into the goods of this specific tip. And this all boils down to your ability to do a self-assessment and therefore improve each time you play this great game. When I say self-assessment, I, I believe that the, two, the, the true masters of self-assessment are those who are able to very accurately and honestly do a self-assessment of the, both their successes and their failures. But we're also going to focus a little bit, not to be negative, but we're going to focus a little bit more on the failure side because I feel that is where so many people go off the rails with this self-assessment. Now, I don't watch a ton of sport, but when I do, I absolutely love it when we have an opportunity as the viewers to get some insight in, into the thinking, the mindset, the mentality of the people that are the best of the best of the best at what they do. I listen to that and I dissect it and I listen for these little slight edge principles and then I ask myself, how can I apply this to Crokinole? How can I apply this to my life? How can I apply this to something that I am striving to improve in right now? And here's a fantastic example of that. I recently took up another great disc sport, which is disc golf, after being encouraged, badgered, harassed by our friend down at the Extra Pint Club, Jason, you're a blooper Malloy, when he said, Jeremy, you have got to try this game. I finally tried it and I, I absolutely love it. It's the, the second greatest game on earth. And honestly, as I, as I try to improve in that game, I am applying the exact three keys that we're talking about here. I'm looking at the physicality and breaking down. I'm watching videos to how to break down and throw that disc, all the mechanics that are involved in it. I'm looking at the strategy, the second key we talked about. What are the strategies that are going to allow me to score better than the players that have better physical skills than I do? And then most importantly is the mentality. With everything we go to do, I believe that that is the most important key. So as a, as a lover of the game, as a person who loves this game, this sport, I do spend a bit of time watching that on YouTube. And I'd like to share with you a match I was recently watching because of the absolute gold nugget that was just nestled in there in the middle of this match. So a little bit of a backstory. When they play these, when they play these cards, there are four players and this was the in this round that I was watching, it was the final round, one of the players on the card was a gentleman by the name of Paul Macbeth. Many consider him to be the absolute best disc golfer in the world. Feel free to debate that down in the comment section because yeah, there are other great players. In this particular match, I think he was four or five strokes behind a young up and comer by the name of Kevin Jones. The holes are running out, they've got five or six holes left, so he is under massive pressure. Kevin had just missed a putt, so the door was open for Paul Macbeth to gain back a stroke that was so critical. And here's what happened. Yeah, he wants to flip that go, script. Go. That window of opportunity oh. just got slammed shut, Macbeth, knowing he's not going to get many of those. Oh, man. There's a tailwind here, not at the basket. You still have to get it high enough. After his miss, he is clearly upset. And I want to be clear that I don't believe that being mentally and emotionally tough means that you don't care when you miss, that you don't get upset, that you that you take an approach of apathy to, to anything. Like, obviously, you need to care about this or you wouldn't be watching videos about how to improve. But listen to what the commentator, a gentleman by the name of Jeremy Colling, another world-class disc golfer, listen to what he has to say about Macbeth and the way he handles this miss. What I really like about Macbeth right there, though, his frustration isn't by being self-deprecating. He's not saying, you're such a bad putter, you're blah, 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 as you see so many people do. Right. He's talking through the miss, talking through the mistake. Learning. Learning from a mistake to know. And last time we saw him do that was hole seven. Can't miss these putts today. Every putt matters. What do you do on hole eight? 75 footer. So that kind of mentality going into the next putt allows him to learn and get better each putt that he misses. His mentality allows him to learn and improve with every putt that he misses. 
think about that. What would happen if you developed a mentality that allowed you to grow and improve and get better with every shot that you missed, with every open 20 that you missed? What would happen to your game and your mindset and your mentality if you could harness that ability? Well, the truth is you can. Something I'd like to encourage you to do with any of these tips that I share, especially as we delve into these mindset tips, I'd encourage you to take what I have, to what, what I have to say, what I've shared with you, the tip, the suggestion, whatever it is, I want you to, to hold that up to your lens of common sense and decide if it fits for you or not. If it does, great, apply it and see what kind of results you can get. And if it doesn't, then I'd encourage you to discard it and just write me off as crazy, keep on going and figure out your own way to improve. But that being said, I'd, I'd like to encourage you to watch out for one reason why someone might discard this idea and devalue it. Maybe you're sitting there thinking of someone that you know that is phenomenal at a sport, whether it's crokinole or disc golf or any sport, maybe it may even be a, a high level professional player that you have noticed that when they make a mistake, they absolutely berate themselves. You go, well, Jim is awesome at this, but Jim trashes him. It's verbally abusive what he does to himself. So obviously that strategy works. Mm, maybe, maybe not. Couple suggestions for you to consider. One is, could Jim be even better <laughs> if he learned a more positive way to self-assess the mistakes that he makes? And two, even if that's not true, let's say there's two paths from where you are now to what you deem to be success. One involves verbally abusing yourself, hating yourself, putting yourself down and being angry. The other one involves you having a really healthy self-image, a really healthy relationship with yourself between here and there, which path would you rather take? I'm leading you a little bit here. I think you know which one I'm suggesting, but the truth is I, I honestly believe that people have the ability to get better faster with a more positive approach to their self-assessment when things go wrong. What we're delving into now is an example of how this technique can be applied to something that has absolutely nothing to do with crokinole. Like I say, when you take these mindset mentality tips that we're going to be sharing, I believe that they can help you be dropping more 20s on and off the board. So here's a great example of how this can be used in a way to improve a completely unrelated aspect of your life. A question I have been asked Asked a lot lately. I was just asked on Sunday uh, out on the disc golf course when uh, one of my card mates said to me, hey Jeremy, what did you do before you built crokinole boards? And my response was, would you like a list? Because truthfully, I have done so many things. Now that's something else that uh, I may share more of just to be more open and transparent this year to come, a little more insight into uh, what led us to where we are today. But the truth is, I grew up working on a pig farm, doing construction, and this example comes from the first career or job that I had that stepped out of physical work. I had the opportunity to become a sales rep for a company called Star Choice Satellite. Not just a sales rep, but a door-to-door -door sales rep. For a lot of people that's scary. For me it was in the beginning, but what incredible opportunity to learn and grow that was. So what happened was here I was, I'm like 23 years old, delving into something I've never done before and I was not very good at it. And what made it worse was I needed to get good at it and I needed to get good at it fast. This was a 100% commission job. If you sell, you eat, if you don't, you don't. And at this stage, Elaine is at home, we've got two young kids, I needed to get good fast. And the way it would work is I would go out there door knocking like I say, but I would walk into a driveway, knock on a door, do my sales pitch, make a sale or not, walk back out the driveway down the road into the next place. Like I say, I wasn't very good, so more often than not, the answer was no. So I would knock on that door, and as if you had been driving down the road and seen me walking out the driveway, picture a young me, I had hair and everything, walking out that driveway, you'd go, that guy is crazy, why is he talking to himself? But what I was doing was I was doing a self-assessment of what had just taken place at that door. And I wasn't berating myself, I wasn't criticizing myself, I was looking at it and saying, if I had that to do over again, maybe I could have said this instead of that, maybe that would have worked. So I would do this self-assessment and I would take the what I got from that into the next driveway, up to the next door, get another no and as I'm walking out that driveway I would replay it over in my head. So every night my supervisor would call me, his name was Jim, and Jim would call me up and say, Jeremy, how many sales did you get today? And I'd say, 
one sale, Jim. And he says, you're not gonna eat very well. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he put a lot of pressure on me, but I kept saying, leave it with me. I can feel this getting better. It wasn't very long when he would call me at the end of the day and he'd say, how many sales did you make today, Jeremy? And I'd say 10 and he'd say, are you lying to me? I say, no. Long story short, after applying this technique, it got to the point where our territory was covered four provinces and I was the number three sales rep in those four provinces. And I don't tell you that to brag, I tell you that to express and show the power that comes from the ability to do a self-assessment, a self-reflection, and looking at my action and not myself personally and figuring out how I can grow and get even better at something that I really needed to get better at. Let's talk about applying this to the great game of Crokinole. What we're talking about is applying the technique of self-assessment to allow yourself to get better with every miss on the board. So there are some suggestions here that are going to make this easier for you to do. The first one is gonna sound a little weird, maybe a little esoteric, we'll go back to that again, but I'm wondering if it's possible for you to separate yourself from your flick. Now what I mean by that is, I want you to look at the action that you took. When you do an assessment, you're not assessing yourself as a person, you are assessing the flick. If the shot was bad, it doesn't mean you are bad. How, many, how often do you hear someone miss whatever they were trying to do and they say something along the lines of, why do I suck so bad? Or why do I always miss? I don't really feel like those questions are going to lead you down the ideal path of self-assessment. A better question that you could consider asking yourself is, okay, if I had that to do over again, what could I do differently? Obviously, if your open 20 goes long, you can go, oh, wow, I need it to back off the power a little bit. If it comes up short, you need it a little bit more. But when the angle ends, it would just be like, if you can quickly stop and go, okay, if I had taken this from a slightly different angle, that's why practice comes in so handy because it takes the pressure off and allows you to try it, put the button back in the same place and tweak. But the truth is, whatever opportunity you just missed on the board is likely to set itself up or something similar in the future. You will get a chance to try that. You'll be able to take your assessment and your experience forward with you and make those adjustments that sees you dropping more 20s. So I guess my suggestion would be is as you're doing that self-assessment to make sure that your wording is ideally positive, okay, how can I do even better? How can, how can I see even better results? Or at the very least, have it be neutral. Something along the lines of what could I do differently? Rather than why did that go so horribly? What is, the, what is the most positive way you can word that? Because if you want better answers, you ask better questions. So that's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Find those best questions that are going to help you self-assess and get better after every shot you either make or miss. Now this is something you can do at any time. You can do it at the end of a match, you can do it at the end of an evening, after a tournament. Uh, maybe you didn't get the result you wanted, but you can sit down and kind of ask yourself, okay, how could I have done this differently? Same thing, positive wording or at least neutral wording that help bring up better answers. The best, the absolute best in the world are able to do it on the fly. So you miss a shot and you're able to quickly go, oh, okay, what could I have done differently? Now I'm going to encourage you, as, as powerful as that can be, I'm going to encourage you to be respectful of your opponent and the other people at the table. Nobody wants to see you do a five minute dissection of what could have gone differently, but can you just quickly ask that question, oh, okay, should have done this, oh, and move on from there. That is when you're going to see the quickest turnaround, the best return on your investment of this tool is when you can quickly apply it, adjust, and move forward. Now, I am going to get a little extra strange in case this hasn't been strange enough for you already and I'm going to encourage you to apply this tip to applying this tip. And what I mean by that is there's so many people have this ingrained habit of berating themselves, putting themselves down. So they may, you know, you hear this tip, you go, oh yeah, Jerry, that's a great idea. And you go and you might apply it once or twice and then you slip into that old pattern you slip back into the old way of putting yourself down, negative questions leads to negative answers and so on. I'm going to encourage you to apply this tip again and just assess that and go, oh wow, you know what? I did well for a few shots, but then I slipped. How can I, how can I improve and carry this positive self-assessment further into my next match, if that makes sense? But yeah, the, the real take home here is to learn to quickly, easily, and positively do a self-assessment of yourself so you can have developed the mentality that you can get better 
after every shot you miss. Have fun improving at the greatest game on earth.